Hey guys, MegaBitMap here. Today I'm going to show you how to make custom power supply cables. So for the tools you'll need, you'll need a soldering iron, solder, a crimping tool. In this case I'm going to be using the IWS1440L. You need a pair of wire strippers, sharp pair of scissors, some fine needle nose pliers. You're going to need plastic connectors, which I'll have a link for on where to find them in the description. And you'll need some staples. These are going to be used in lieu of a pen extraction tool. So what I'm doing is I'm just breaking off one staple and then I'm gonna unfold it a little bit and I'll show you how to use that later uh, to be able to take pens out of a plastic connector. You also need some pieces of heat shrink and then you'll need uh, the connectors themselves which I would recommend going with the 18 gauge because from my experience they seem to be a much better fit You'll also need some string, which we'll use as measuring. Alright, so let's get started. So this is a system we're working on, and uh, this is a Pico PSU, so I need to make a cable that goes from this 4-pin over to this 8-pin over here. Now the first thing you want to do is use your string and sort of lay it out and figure out how long you need it to be. You can see this one I already pre-cut to be uh, about, the si about the right length with a little bit of uh, extra uh, just because it's better to err on the side of lo too long than too short. You also need some wire. In this case I'm going to be using some uh, black 18 gauge stranded wire. So first thing you'll need to do, uh, if you're just making a straight cable, because this one I had to do a Y, because it's going from an 8 pin to a 4 pin. So first thing I'll show you is how to do a regular crimp on one cable. So first of all you need your wire strippers, and I'm going to be using the 18 gauge stranded slot right here. Try to get that info. There you go, right there. So I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to take just a few millimeters off. You see, not too long. You don't want too much of that bare copper exposed. So now I got to go to my strip of Molex connectors. I'm going to just uh, break one off and then since the wire I'm using has such a thick uh, plastic coating on the outside what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, needle nose pliers and I'm just gonna take see how there's two wings on the back of the connector that is meant to hold the insulation right there. And this holds this part holds the actual wire. So I'm gonna break off the part that holds the insulation because uh, from my experience it's uh, it doesn't fit well with this thick coated wire. So I'm just gonna discard those extra wings. And now I have a crimp without the uh, strain and relief for the insulation. So now I'm going to position my finger on the tip of the cable and I'm going to set the crimp on it. Now I'm going to grab my crimpers with the other hand and I'm going to uh, show it this way with the little concavity on top. I'm going to open them up and then slide it in. And then what I'm going to use is this little back piece 
on the 17L. That's the uh, that's the size crimp we need to do. So I'm going to hold it on the back of the connector against the little bowl shape right there. And then I'm going to, oh, got a little bit rotated. So I'm going to, so now once I got it in the jaws, I'm going to give it a squeeze with the moderate amount of force. And then there we go. There is a properly crimped cable. So I'm going to do it once more just to make sure it's all the way down. All right. Now, as you can see, it is fully crimped down on the wire. I'm going to give it a good tug, and it hasn't come off, which shows that it should be a strong crimp that is not going to have excess resistance. So now I need to insert it into the other side of the connector and I'm going to have two links in the description to uh, guidance photos on what pens go to wear um, but since this is a CPU 8 to 4 pen it's pretty self-explanatory since um, this uh, Y splitter cable is going into the top right I'm going to put the other end and insert it into the top right. All right, just like that, clicked in. Go ahead and give it another tug to make sure it won't come out. And then that is uh, one out of the four cables for this cable uh, crimped and terminated. So next, I'm gonna work on doing another one of these Y cables which is what I prefer to do instead of uh, pigtails like you see on uh, most other power supply cables. Okay, so now I need to grab a piece of wire and I need to... Um, actually, first I'm going to crimp an end on one side. So, strip it about half a centimeter like that. Now I'm going to break off another uh, Molex terminal off my strip, get my locking pliers, and take the two extra wings on the end off. Now that I got the connector held with my finger, I'm going to bring in the crimping tool, align it against the uh, little shelf back there, and I'm going to slide it down, let go of, my, uh, of it against the finger, and I'm going to crimp it in the jaws. There you can see another crimp. Ideally, you want this to be perfectly flat. Um, if you crimp it too hard, sometimes it likes to kink like this and bend, uh, bend inwards. But it shouldn't be a problem when inserting it into the connector. And also, of course, you want to give it a little bit of a tug, make sure it's actually on there and not about to fall off. So I'm going to insert this into the connector. Whoops, I have it upside down. All right, now I am going to bend it over and try to match uh, the other Y that I did earlier. So I'm gonna sort of feel it out. And I think if I bend it right here, that should be good. All right, so I'm going to put a, a crease in the cable. 
like that. And get my scissors and then cut it about right here around halfway into the connector and that should give you plenty of room to strip off some and then crimp so I'm gonna cut that there I'm gonna get my strippers I'm gonna align it in the 18 gauge slot and then I'm just gonna get a little bit of bare copper exposed right there so that I can solder onto it later and then I also need to strip off some on this end as well so since there is a little bit of uh, insulation there with no copper I'm gonna do about closer to a centimeter Sorry, the camera fell right there, but what I was saying was go closer to a centimeter on the strip because you got the extra insulation that doesn't have copper underneath it from when we spread this out right here. All right, so now let's break off another connector and then take the extra wings off. And then when you're actually doing this, what I suggest doing is doing a bunch of connectors at once. That way you don't have to constantly be going back and forth. Alright, so once I got the crimp on like that, I'm just going to come over carefully, align it against the back right there, and then squeeze it. All right, there we go. We have another uh, decent crimp. All right, now I'm going to give it a tug. And that thing is secure, so I'm going to uh, bend it back and then insert it into... Uh, whoops, I have it upside down yet again. So if it um, if the wire doesn't really want to play, sometimes you just have to grip it with a pair of pliers and bend it the way you need to. Can be a little cumbersome working with thicker wire. That's what it's looking like right now. Now I need to splice on wire to that little elbow. So this time I'm gonna strip off closer to a, f or actually a full centimeter this time. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bare copper in between. I'm gonna bend it over and then pull tight. Oh, whoops, I almost forgot for the heat shrink. So first, put some heat shrink on since I haven't crimped the other side of the cable, it's not completely necessary, but it's a good habit to get into. All right, so now I'm gonna bend the, bend the copper over. I'm gonna pull it tight. All right, that looks good. All right, it looks like I stripped off a little too much copper there. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess. Alright, I'm going to fold it back again flat. Alright, now I'm going to use my crimpers to hold it against the desk. If you have helping hands, I would definitely recommend using those. Alright, now I'm going to uh, clean off my soldering iron. And then I'm going to add some fresh solder to the tip. And then I'm going to apply the soldering iron to the cable and then flow the solder uh, across the cable. Whoops. All right, there we go. That's plenty. So 
So once it's secure and you can pull on it and it's not coming loose, that means you soldered it well enough. And then now I am going to uh, slide up the heat shrink that I put on the wire earlier. And actually, first I'm going to use the end of my uh, strippers just to compress where the two wires come together in the Y. And I'm going to use my scissors to just cut the uh, insulation ever so uh, slightly uh, to make it more of a smooth transition from one to two cables. And then now I'm going to slide my heat shrink over. I'm going to try to align it so that it slides over, doing a little bit of a twisting motion. And once I got it fully covered, uh, I'm going to take my soldering iron. I'm just going to use the outer tip uh, to melt the heat shrink. Um, just like that. Get underneath as well as on top. And that looks good. So it's not fully even on both sides, but I'm not a perfectionist, so I'm just going to go with it. So now I'm going to uh, see how long the other cable is, and I'm going to cut it right, right on the other side of my thumb, right about there. Let's double check, make sure it's the right length. All right, and that looks just about perfect. I'm gonna take maybe another millimeter off. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and strip this end in the 18 gauge slot. Get the bare copper standing up tall. Um, you need to break off a crimp connector and then take the extra wing off. Now I am going to align the crimp on the con uh, connector, or on the wire rather. Uh, take my crimps, align it, with the 7L lobe, oh whoops, line it with the 7L lobe. Um, yeah, sometimes it's definitely going to be a little tricky at first. Um, you have to have quite steady hands to be able to do this quickly. All right, so I'm going to line it on the back. Get it inside the jaws, and then crimp. As you can see, have a nicely crimped cable right there. Again, tug on it, make sure it doesn't come loose. And then now, I'm going to insert it into the connector. So if you look at both sides, we can see that it needs to be on the top left of the connector. So I'm going to insert it into the top left. And then once it snaps in, I'm going to give it a tug to make sure it doesn't come out. Alright, now that you've seen how to do it, I'm going to time lapse uh, while I finish the other half of this cable and I'll catch up with you at the end. All 
Okay, so this is the perfect example. Okay, so this this last one I just did is not crimped properly because it should not be able to push through the front like that. So now I'm going to show you guys how to extract this pen so we can recrimp it properly. So take one of your staples and bend one leg flat like this and we're going to insert it on the outer edge in between the metal and the plastic on the pen. Now I'm going to take the other staple put it on the opposite side of the pen. Now this is going to be the tricky part. And it looks like... Okay, see how it just went in the center of the pen? That is not what you want. So I'm going to try to put it on the outside and this can definitely be finicky. Alright, sorry about that. I had to take it off camera. So what I did was I poked it out a little bit so to where it's protruding, I squeezed it a little bit, and now I should be able to easily slide the staples in between the metal and the plastic. Just like that. I'm going to use the pliers to insert it deeper on both sides. And then, now once they've clicked, you should be able to just, okay, not quite, they need to go a little bit further. Just wiggle them back and forth until they fall into place. And just like that. So now I need to take this crimp off, so I'm going to pull it a little bit. I'm going to cut it right at the edge so I don't lose much length. All right, now I'm going to strip off about another uh, millimeter just so I have a little bit more cable to grab onto. All right, that's perfect. Now I need to grab another crimp. You can get a proper, proper crimp now. Much better. All right, now let's reinsert it, reinsert it, and perfect. See how it isn't coming out or poking through the tip? That is perfect. So that is how to make custom power supply cables. Uh, the way I like to do it with um, no pigtails, but little Y splits with solder. You're more than welcome to do however you like. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.